Ravens and Chiefs AFC Championship rematch on Thursday night. Andrew Hawkins up with us early this morning. Hawk, what will a win over Mahomes mean for Lamar Jackson if he gets one on Thursday night? Honestly, Greeny, it won't mean anything. The same way if he loses, it won't mean anything because what we're yes. judging Lamar Jackson on is his ability to win in the postseason. They want Super Bowls. He understands that. That's the standard he has for himself. So while a win to open the season against one of the best quarterbacks he's ever, ever seen will be great for him, it won't mean anything in the grand scheme of his critics or how we're judging him this season. Fair enough. Let's go to Friday night. We got the Eagles and the Packers. Hey, Graziano, yeah. does Jalen Hurts need a big game to silence the critics? I, I think so. The way the, the season ended for the Eagles last year was complete disaster. And, and obviously, I think, you know, you have an extra couple days between weeks one and week two in uh, the toughest sports fan town in, in, in the entire country. Yeah, no. It'd be a rough couple days uh, for Jalen Hurts if they look bad on Friday night. Not to mention the 11 hour flight back. That's not fun. From Sao Paulo won't be fun. Okay, uh, Jeff, Cowboys, Browns in Cleveland. Is Miles Garrett and that Browns D about to wreck week one for Dak and Dallas? Yes. I, I, listen, I, I think this defense at the end of the season is going to be a top three defense. I think Schwartz does a fantastic job. I think they got pass rushers galore. I think they can play on the back end. They can play man. And they can be physical with teams. I know they got some injuries they're trying to overcome on the back end, but listen, this is a team built to rush the passer. That's a problem for Dallas. Absolutely. So, speaking of the Cowboys, Mike McCarthy getting his team ready after an offseason filled with one tumultuous day after another, but he's got a master plan for week one and well beyond. Here's what he said. <laughs> it's not hard to focus on Cleveland. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's what's right in front of us. Um, yeah, you have to have a plan, um, you know, my plans for 21 games. Uh, we have a 21 game plan um, laid it out today in the team meeting. So everyone, of course, jumps on that and seizes on it, you know, because I mean, what's he supposed to say? We're, yeah, I, I've got an 18 game plan. Right, right, right. We always lose in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> right. So, right, right. I mean, what's he supposed to say? Right. right. And that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with I him thought, saying that. I thought, yeah, you know, he's not shooting high enough because if you 20, if you get the one seed. That's right. But then Jeff pointed out. What? They yeah. can't. They can't because it hasn't happened in 20 years. He can't, he can't win the division. told me for 10 years <laughs> since I've been working with him. It's not going to happen, sir. And he's always right. McCarthy's so, just doing gross math. He, he knows the rules. Go to 21. We're not going to win the division, but we're going to be in the hunt. Okay. So let's make sure everyone is as ready for this weekend as they need to be. Because Graziano, who was out there on his training camp tour, you're you already in midseason form. Most of us are just getting caught up with everything. So we look at the Browns and we say this is a team that finished so strong last year, mm. made the playoffs with Joe Flacco. That defense is elite. There are some questions about Cleveland in week one. Mainly health, right? I mean, like right. they haven't – both tackles have, have had a hard time getting on the field this offseason. It looks like Jack Conklin might be able to play, but he may have to play left tackle because Jedrick Ooh. Wills is hurt. Right. So and, – and the defense, they got some guys working their way back from injury too. I think the Browns are going to have a very good team this year. Uh, a lot depends, obviously, on the quarterback, Deshaun Watson, and how he plays. But – uh, they may not be all the way whole just yet for a game against Micah Parsons and the Cowboys. That, that's something to keep your eye on as we get set for Sunday and what's going to be a big spotlight game, right? Brady, sure. Tom Brady's first game as an announcer and everything else. And, and then there is the question. I'm Brady announcing. Yeah. I, I, I forget love Grainy. That's where we're at right now. Yeah, let's it's, talk big, about the game. Let's it's talk a big deal. It's a pretty big but deal. But it is a big deal. But let's, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. I'm happy to talk okay. about the game. I appreciate that. I think Brady's presence in the booth will be a major factor, don't you? No. I'm tuning in, no doubt. Hawk, the, 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 this, this whole offseason, all the talk, all the nonsense, all the craziness and everything else, that's all behind us now. Let's go on the field. C.D. Lamb has been in camp for, what, six days? He, he's going to have a total of less than two weeks. So for the Cowboys' chances of winning, for the folks who have fantasy implications and may have, you know, prop bet implications, yeah. what percentage of C.D. Lamb's best should we be expecting on the field Sunday in Cleveland? I, I would say 85 at most, and that does not dictate his ability. He's still C.D. Lamb, but he has not been in camp running the 10-plus miles of full-speed routes that a receiver needs to get ready for a season. Mm. We talk about football shape all the time, and the only way to get in football shape is to play football. Yeah, that's true. There's a higher level than that. There is getting in wide receiver shape in the NFL, and it is even harder than getting in NFL shape because these are the guys that sprint and run the most. There's going to be a lot of wear and tear he's about to put on his body, and if his body yep. isn't prepared for it, you got to be uh, uh, prepared for him not to be at the full speed, full strength, for the duration that you typically see him. And he's the linchpin in this offense. 
So without him being able to be that, there's absolutely a, a, a degrade that you're going to see from the Dallas Cowboys offense against a really good Browns defense. I'm going to say something that is probably going to make everyone yell at me, but I'm right. And that is that, look, this is it's going to feel like an enormous game, right? Because Tom Brady's in yeah. the booth and everything else. Yes. But the, the reality <laughs> is it's a road game against an AFC opponent. Right. Mm -hmm. this, this game will not decide the Cowboys season. It is not worth having C.D. Lamb getting the hamstring injury that all these guys get. So I'm not suggesting don't play him. Don't be ridiculous. Right, right. But I'm saying caution is, is, the, is the proper route to you, right? Discretion, the better part of valor, whatever expression yeah. I'm looking right, right. for. I'm not putting him in a position, even if it means, you know, jeopardizing my chances of winning the game. I am limiting his snaps or whatever it is you have to do to keep him from getting hurt because we got a long season and we cannot Absolutely. have our most important player pulling a hamstring week No, one. I actually agree with you. I think you have to manage reps and expectations for C.D. Lamb for week one, right? Because as a player, you want to get out there. You want to do all you can do for your team. All that matters. Everybody's excited. Here's the problem, and, and, and Hawk says it best, and he's done it so he knows. It's not only the mileage on your body. It's it's the defense, that the way they play you. Mm. Cleveland's going to play them physically. He, they're going to get up and jam. They're going to make it. It's going to it's going to be contentious off the line. A lot of hand fighting when you got to go run block. You got to get down inside. There's a lot that goes into that, and I think people don't understand. Like getting you know piles, making sure you don't get you know rolled up. All the things that go in that people don't ever discuss. That's football shape. And I think Hawk made a great point, and yeah. it's making sure he's prepared for all of that if you're that medical staff. So what an unbelievable pair of opening games we have between the AFC game on Thursday tonight and then this one in Brazil Ooh. on Friday. Do we have time to play Jeff Darlington here? Sure. Here was Jeff Darlington yesterday talking about why he thinks this game is the most important one of the whole weekend. This team has to get their chemistry back. They have been working all offseason on that. Nick Sirianni knows he has to get more out of Jalen Hurts in terms of locker room leadership and Sirianni himself knows he needs to get more leadership out of himself within this locker room. This is the game where you are setting momentum in place. You are changing the dynamic and the narrative about the rest of the season. To me, this is the most important game of the NFL season for week one. In so many different ways for Philly. I think we all sure. were sort of nodding along yeah. as he was saying that. And it was yesterday here live with us on Get Up that he did. So, Jeff, it's a complicated question, but as a former player and coach. Yeah. That team didn't fall apart last year because of X's and O's. Right. It fell apart because something was wrong. Well, the X's and O's yeah, were bad. it was bad. But there was just internal <laughs> stuff. You could just see it. Right. Like, there, there were things that even those of us who didn't play or coach the game can just see. Right. The team just has, has lost its ability to sort of all pull on the rope. What, if anything, can they show you on Friday night in yeah. the first game that will tell you, okay, whatever it was, they figured it the, out. The way they finish plays. That's offense and defense. So what that means is, you know, how many hats are getting around the ball on defense, right? When you see a guy tackle, is it, is it one guy tackling? Are there, is everybody coming together to make the tackle? Offensively, are they throwing that final block, right? Is somebody doing the extra to get out and spring a block, you know, cut one for Barkley? Whatever you're going to do, those are the things that you see that sees a team. That's the, quote, chemistry everybody he's talking about is how do they play for each other and again I'm one of those who don't believe coaches create culture I, I think they cast a vision I think the locker room is where culture is developed so I mm. think it's a big moment for Jalen Hurts and the rest of this uh this this Eagles football team to take control of who they are as a team that's very interesting to me Hawk as a former player the, the, the reality is there are questions about the coach Nick Sirianni and there are questions about the mm. young quarterback Jalen Hurts if this thing goes badly, it's the coach who's going to go. No doubt. I mean, Hertz is getting paid all the money, right. and he's 26 years old. So he's not going anywhere. But, but is it on Hertz more than it's on Sirianni, in your mind, Hawk, to be the leader of this, to get this thing figured out, and to get it going in the right direction? I think it's on Sirianni, for sure. Um, but to your point, like, what you want out of your franchise quarterback is someone who takes that responsibility on themselves to figure it out, regardless of who is the coach and leading the vision for the team. To Jeff's point, what I'm looking for to say that the Eagles have turned the corner, it's not anything on the field. I want to see the sideline. I want to mm -hmm. see a sideline that after you have success is Devontae Smith, A.J. Yeah. Brown, Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, uh, Jahan Dotson. Are these guys looking as if this is just a first step in a 21 game plan to take McCarthy's uh, approach to it that it doesn't matter who gets the ball. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of chefs That's in that right. kitchen. We know they have the talent. And the problem 
last year when we started to really see this poke its head was on the sideline. It was with the coaches. It was between the players. That was the first indicator to us because they were winning football games. So I want to see that this game, that regardless of who gets the shine, if they walk out of there with a win, that everybody feels like, hey, this is a complete first step. Danny, See, I think, what have you heard out of there? Yeah, look, Do we think that th things are going in the right direction. I, they they feel good about it, right? I mean, like that, you know. Obviously, Sirianni, it's been public in terms of some of the issues that went on there last year. So, you know, he's had to learn from that, and, and ideally gets better. I think that you made an interesting point, Jeff, about the player leadership. Jason Kelsey was there forever in the middle of the offensive yeah. line. Fletcher Cox was there forever in the middle of the defensive yeah. line. Both those guys are gone, so someone else has to step into those roles. Uh, so obviously Jalen Hurts has an opportunity for him uh, to elevate in that regard as well. So, yeah, I, I just, to me, like, I, I don't think the Eagles looking good answers any questions. Right. I, I think, I think we, we, we need to know about the Eagles is how they respond if they look bad, right? It, it, how they respond mm -hmm. to adversity. They didn't have any two years ago. Last year, once it set in, they fell apart completely. Right. So, to me, I, I feel like we need to see the Eagles get through a season, deal with some negatives, and bounce back from them in order to answer the questions that we have about them from last year. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Let's, very quickly, let's talk about Jason Kelsey because he's yeah. one of the greatest centers of all time, and yeah. so are you. And, and, and he was the unquestioned leader of that team. I think most people viewed it that way, not, not only off the field, but with all the stuff he was doing on the field. Like how would you quantify the significance oh, of that loss? I think it's a massive loss. I mean, I, I just think his, his attitude in the locker room, his attitude on that team, I, I think he, I think people identified Jason Kelsey and the Eagles, right? It was yeah. like that, that's his personality. I do think, though, there's opportunities, and, and Graz just said it, where Hertz can step up and learn more about his offense, right? Understanding more – and being more of, of the leader on the field, not listening to – making the commands, making the calls, telling everybody where he wants them, how he wants it. And it's hard when you're a young player coming into that style system that you don't depend on. And not negatively, we all need to depend on each other on a football field, but, but leaning more on what Hurts can do as a player as opposed to other guys around him, I think that allows him to be the true quantified leader of that offense. That said, Jalen is going to have to get used to taking snaps from a different center. And, yeah. and as we've all seen – at different times, that can be a challenge. But I will say proudly that in my very first attempt at taking a snap from Damian Woody, Jeff, I succeeded. What do you think? What did you see here? He almost broke my thumb. <laughs> what, what, what did you see there? That you my, almost broke your thumb. My snap taking. And th form. This is my favorite part of this, Greeny. Is, yeah. Okay, you you immediately look down at the thumb. Yeah. You have defensive pressure now right. coming to you. Oh. 